Okay, friends, we are going to take these biscuits, this roll, and I'm gonna go ahead and make all of them. If you have leftover carnitas or pork, this is a great recipe. Let's go ahead, we'll lay them all out on my parchment lined baking sheet here. Okay, I'm gonna take this shot glass and press into each one of them so that I'm creating kind of a cup shape here. My oven is currently preheating to 400 degrees. We're gonna bake these for about 10 minutes, take them out and repress them, making sure that we really get this cup shape because we're gonna put some stuff in them. While that's in the first round of the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get our eggs ready. So I think I'm gonna do six eggs. Go ahead and mix them up. My husband will probably make the eggs because He's just good at it. Also, I am aware that to have six eggs for a recipe, you basically need a second mortgage on your house. Okay, I'm gonna add a touch of milk into these. It's probably like a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. And there is this new seasoning, seasoning that I've been trying. It's Kevin's Natural Foods. It's an all-purpose, like an everything type of seasoning. So I'm just gonna use this instead of salt and pepper. It's pretty good. I tried it actually the other morning when I made a quiche and I really liked it. So I figured we would just try it in this one, give it a shot. Let's kind of whisk these together so that they're ready to go for him. Okay, now sometimes he will put um, other things into our eggs like, what is it called? Creme fraiche or a Greek yogurt. He still might do that even though I put the milk in there. I'll let him decide. And then we're definitely gonna add cheese to them when we cook them. Okay, already I have an adjustment or a tip. Make your biscuits, but only cook them for five minutes. I just took them out at the six and a half minute mark and they're almost done, okay? So you do not wanna make them so that, you do not wanna leave them in for 10 minutes on the first round. So we're repressing these to get that cup in there. Look, this is perfect. This is working out really well, okay? So yeah, five minutes would have been just like the ideal time. These are gonna be so good. Okay, now these are gonna go back in there, but I'm, I'm assuming they're only gonna cook for about five or so more minutes. All right, so you put, what, tablespoon of butter in there? Uh, yeah. About a tablespoon. I thought he might use Greek yogurt. You can see it over there. All right. That's in place of creme fraiche. Yeah, creme fraiche. I said that earlier. All right, so he's gonna scramble up the eggs and get those ready. And then after that, the, um, the carnitas are actually reheated, everything's ready to go. So we'll just assemble. You want cheese in these eggs? Yeah, you... cheese in the eggs. Okay. You could do it either way. I'm sure you could just put the cheese on the top, but I'd, I think cheese in the eggs. Now we take the eggs and we're gonna put some eggs into each one. Is this, was this from something? That's from Sam's. The, really? Yeah, the carnitas. Yeah, we froze it or something. Uh-huh. Speaking of, if you haven't had that, it's delicious. It's carnitas. It's so good, y'all. Carnitas from Sam's and it's refrigerated you can reheat it in your oven. You can reheat it in the crock pot. That's usually how we do it is in the crock pot. It's, it has the best flavor. It's two pounds of meat and I wanna say it's, what is it, 20 bucks? I feel like it might even be less than 20 bucks, honestly. Yeah. So we're adding eggs, like I said, to each one. I want to use all of the eggs because you know, we're not gonna let eggs go to waste. So now we're gonna add carnitas. I put a lot of eggs in these guys. <laughs> you probably could have gone less on those, but I was not gonna waste those eggs. I'm gonna add salsa to, uh, let's do half of them. You can add salsa to all of them, but this is a medium and I just wanna make sure it's not too spicy. So I'm just gonna go salsa on four. Okay. 
Okay, cilantro would be delicious on this, but we're gonna use parsley. This looks really, really pretty. I'm gonna move one to a plate so I can taste it. We are having this for dinner. Also a really beautiful brunch option, breakfast option. Came together really quickly. The flavors are there, especially if you use those carnitas from Sam's Club because they are delicious. This is very good. I really like this one. Definitely suggest giving this one a try. And it's beautiful. It should come as no surprise to you that we love brie. So let's make another recipe with brie that is a perfect appetizer that also uses canned biscuit dough. It's very easy to make, it serves really pretty, and it looks awesome when you put this out with other appetizers. All right guys, this is a fun one. We are going to be using these biscuits right here. These are the Annie's biscuits, but feel free to use whatever kind you like. I'm using a pie dish or pie plate, I guess, or a quiche, quiche dish, I'm not even sure what you wanna call it, but we're going to take each one of our biscuits and cut them in half. And then, you can even cut them you know what, I'm gonna change it up a little bit because I feel like the size would be really good if they're cut into quarters. So cut it into quarters and then you're just gonna fashion it into a ball shape. Again, you can do these in half too if that's what you want. I just feel like, I don't know, there's something about the size and dipping that I think would be really good for this shape. Let's just see what's the difference here. My oven is currently preheating to 375 degrees. So we definitely need that done. Okay, so we've got a double ring here. Now I have this brie round, okay? So it came in a container like this right here. We are going to open it up and cut the top off, just the, the top part of the rind. So just this part right here, okay? Okay, so just cutting off this top layer. Why am I doing this? Let's do it on a cutting board. That's what I get. We're not wanting to dirty a cutting board, but needing it anyway. Okay, so we got the top rind. Just take off a little bit more. That bottom rind will hold it together, keep it together as the cheese melts. This is gonna go right in the center. Now I have a little bit of buttery garlic that was melted a minute ago, but we're gonna brush the tops of these just a bit. Okay, you can also add parsley to this or you know whatever kind of flavors you enjoy. Now I'm gonna season these biscuits with a little bit of salt and also just a little bit of pepper. And I'm also gonna top them with a little bit of parsley and we're gonna use some fresh parsley. I think when these come out, I'll see what it looks like, but I think that would be pretty too. Okay, so this is gonna go into my oven and it's just going to bake until this brie gets melty about eight minutes or so and then we're gonna do something else to it. All right, now obviously this is not done. The biscuits are not done, everything's not done. Just hang with me for a second. You can use cranberry here, but I'm actually gonna use this strawberry spread. We are going to take some and add it here and just start to kind of mix it into this melted brie. It's gonna to continue to melt, so don't panic. So I just used a couple tablespoons. I would say you can use whatever will fit. If you can get more in there, go ahead. If you can't, then you might not wanna to put too much in so it's not overflowing everywhere. I'm gonna to top with a little bit of rosemary. Okay, let's put this back into the oven. And this is going to go in for about seven to eight more minutes or so. And then we will continue. We have one last step here. We are gonna drizzle with a little bit of honey. How delicious does this look? You know this looks delicious. You can definitely add more rosemary or more parsley if that's your preference. I love brie. The raspberry adds the perfect amount of sweetness plus that honey, and the biscuits are cooked perfectly. They're not overdone, they're not underdone. This is very good. 
your guests or your household, they're gonna love these. We love a good French dip. Tonight we are gonna make French dip biscuits. These are really easy to make. You can use all the ingredients that you typically use to make French dip, but it's gonna be made with canned biscuit dough. Okay, the first thing that I'm gonna do is sharpen my knife. Let's get everything prepped to go along with the French dip. So I'm gonna start by slicing up some mushrooms. Obviously you can buy them pre-sliced. I actually think that I ordered in my grocery order pre-sliced mushrooms, but they must have been out and just subbed for these, which is totally fine. And then we, we are not gonna be adding onions to ours, but you should feel free to do that. All right, I think that's good for the mushrooms. We are using a thin sirloin tip sandwich steak. Uh, basically, you just want to have some sort of sirloin that you can cut into smaller pieces. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's already pretty thin, but I'm going to cut it into strips so that it will be completely ready to go. Now, you can use a flank or, what's the other one, flank? Oh man, I'm drawing a blank. I wish my husband was here right now because he knows exactly what the name is that I'm thinking of, but I don't. So anyway, you wanna cut thin, that's the biggest thing. The thinner it is, the better it's going to be for something like this. So I like to keep the pieces nice and thin. Hopefully you can see how thin these are. A good knife helps in this process too. I'll try and zoom in here in the editing so you guys can see what the thickness is of these pieces. I always personally cut um, against the grain as well. I never cut with the grain when I'm cutting for something like this. I just feel like it makes it so much more tender um, and easier to chew and cut and all that kind of stuff. So the steak is all cut, ready to go. Mushrooms are cut, ready to go. So pretty much everything else at this point, at this stage is gonna happen over on the stove top. I'm gonna turn my oven or my stove top on and get this butter melting. So we're actually gonna do a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil into my pan. And as that's melting and starting to cook up, we're gonna add in the mushrooms so we can get those cooking. And those are not gonna take very long. We just want them to soften up just a little bit. Okay, let's also add in a little bit of garlic so that can saute. You add whatever amount of garlic you like. Most of the recipes don't call for this, but I like to add a little bit of coconut aminos and a little bit of Worcestershire. I don't know, I feel like it just tastes really good to add those two flavors to this. Now, before I add those in though, I am gonna add a little bit of salt. And then once we put the pepper in, we're gonna add a little bit more, um, once we put the pepper in, once we put the steak in, we're gonna add a little bit more of salt and pepper. But I like to saute in some soy sauce or coconut aminos and a little bit of Worcestershire because it just adds such good flavor. I'll probably add a touch more once we put that beef in as well. All right, I'm gonna crank up my heat because I want the uh, beef to get a little bit of a sear on it. So I'm gonna push this stuff just to the side a bit. I don't know if it's gonna get too much of a sear because my pan's gonna be a bit overcrowded. So this is not gonna take long to cook at all, just a couple of minutes. Forgot to turn my camera on for this part. All we did was take two biscuits out of a can of biscuit dough, the canned biscuit dough, and I cut them in half, okay? They're not cooked or anything, just laid them here on this parchment paper. This is where you can get a little bit creative. So horseradish could be really good on this. Um, we, we love a good stone ground mustard or a spicy mustard or something like that. So I'm adding a little bit of mustard to each one of them, somewhat kind of spread it around. Take the Philly cheese, Philly, what, what would this part be called? The steak part. We're gonna take the steak part and just kind of put it on each one. Now, one thing you could do is make like handheld pies with this. You could roll these out almost like mini calzones and then pinch the seams together. That would be really fun. Um, we're just doing it this way though. Okay, we're gonna use some provolone cheese and I'm just cutting it up to make it easier to put on here. And so we're just kind of kind of 
gonna kind of, we're just gonna lay, we're just going to lay some of this provolone cheese here onto each one. Now we can use two more biscuits, cutting them in half as well, lay them on top. And if you want, you can pinch the, the sides together a little bit. I mean, they're not gonna stay together completely, but you will make, you know, somewhat of a little pie sandwich thing here. Overstuffed, nobody will complain about it being overstuffed though. These are gonna bake at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. We can also make a little au jus to go with them for dipping. It'll be perfect. These French dip biscuits look delicious. We're gonna just dip and try. Very good. You can, like I said, you can make them in the ham pie version. You can make a lot of these. We only needed one for each person because we're having several other things tonight, but that is really tasty. Add the ingredients that you love into this. I really like this. And I think it's just so fun and creative. It's not super messy. This is good. This next recipe is so fun. Everyone is gonna love this one, I promise. We've got about a pound of ground beef right here. If you do not want to make up your own meatballs, feel free to buy meatballs already frozen. You can absolutely use those. We pretty much always make up our meatballs just because that's easy to do. And we almost always have the supplies ready to go. So I keep this pretty simple. I don't even measure what goes in this anymore. I'll do a rough estimate in the description box. If you're curious, I'm gonna add in some pepper. This is white pepper. I've been using that lately and it's kind of a um, parenting thing. My son, for some reason lately, when he sees pepper on stuff, he thinks that it's going to be too spicy. But I've been using the white pepper and he doesn't notice quite as much. Sometimes he'll still make a comment and say, there's a lot of spice on this. But anyway, the white pepper, he doesn't seem to notice as much, so we went with white pepper. Got some onion powder. Feel free to use onions if that's what you prefer. I'm gonna add some salt. One egg. Now you can do this in your KitchenAid mixer or with a hand mixer, or you can mix it with your hands. Totally up to you. Let's add in some breadcrumbs. And I like to add minced garlic. Feel free to add minced garlic. Feel free to add, um, what is it called? Powder, garlic powder. So we'll just toss some of that in and get this all mixed together. Now, you could make as much of this recipe as you want. You can make up lots of meatballs. You could do multiple rows of this. this. That'll make sense in just a minute when we start to assemble. You could even cut this recipe, you know, probably in half. I'm choosing to go ahead and make up all of the meatballs, and we will not use all of them in this recipe, but I figured I've got to make meatballs for this recipe. We'll probably just have something like spaghetti and meatballs for dinner tonight. My family loves when I just make a really simple dinner, especially after we've had all these different things for holidays. Don't you love when you thought you had everything prepped and ready to go for a recipe and you didn't? So now I'm shredding cheese. This is mozzarella. And I was thinking as I was pulling this out of the fridge, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna use the Asiago Romano cheese that I have already done. That one's expired. So we are shredding mozzarella. No big deal, I've got my cheese shredder that you guys know I love so much. I'm gonna be using my cast iron skillet for this one. Feel free to use just any oven safe skillet. Or, I mean, technically you could probably make this in a, ooh, you can make it in a pie dish. I wonder if I should just do that. I have no good reason for changing the dish other than the fact that I already made something for this video in the cast iron skillet. So we'll just make it in this pie dish. We are going to preheat the oven to 350. And I'm using these Annie's biscuits. You can use whatever kind of biscuits you like. You can definitely home make your biscuits, but we had plenty of biscuits from just different things that I made over the holidays. I think I've said it here before, Hillary is her name, but her account is Old World Home. She has a biscuit recipe on her channel. It's every single time I need to make biscuits, I just go get her recipe. It's so simple. I should have it memorized by now. I'm also getting out my cookie scoop, which I should have already done. And I need to get out my rolling pin, which I should have already done. We're gonna get organized, guys, one of these days. All right, is it even fun anymore if I'm, if I'm organized? Okay, let's start taking our biscuits. 
we're going to roll them out enough that we can stuff them and then wrap them kind of around themselves. Okay, so flattening it out here. I'm going to take a little bit of cheese. Let's move this closer. Put a little bit of cheese here at the bottom. And then we are going to scoop a meatball. Okay, oh, not like that. Take your meatball. You can add cheese to the top too if you want. We're gonna wrap it up. Pinch all of our seams together. And we're just gonna repeat this process and go all the way around our pie dish here. And we're gonna use all of the biscuits. Okay, I think we're pinched good. So, oh, I meant, I meant to tell you, you can make these smaller too. What I would do if you wanna make these smaller, you're gonna make your meatball smaller, but I would cut this in half or even in quarters. I mean, you can make them really small so that you have several bite-sized ones. That could be really fun too. I don't remember if I put cheese in the last one. Hopefully I did. So while I am making these, these are very similar to this recipe that I made in this video right here, which is a what we called a meatball Wellington. And if you haven't tried this one, it's all the same type of flavors. This is just kind of like a mini appetizer kind of version of that, but we loved that dinner. It was so tasty, so fun. If you're looking for a fun recipe, highly suggest you check that one out. And my oven just dinged so that it's ready. I'm just sprinkling these with a little bit of onion powder. We are gonna do some garlic butter, but first I want these to go ahead and cook for a couple of minutes. So overall, these are gonna cook about 15 to 18 minutes on 350. We're gonna take them out at about the seven to eight minute mark and we will add some garlic butter and then put them back in. So while those are in there, we've got a couple things that we need to do. Let's make up a garlic butter. So I've just melted about a tablespoon of butter and we're gonna add in some minced garlic. I'm gonna probably add overall about a half teaspoon. That's what I'm trying. I could get my half teaspoon measurer out, but I already have this knife out, so. That's gonna be ready and just set to the side. When they come out at around the seven minute mark, we're going to brush these with this garlic butter. All right, also while that's in there, we need to make up our sauce. Now I'm gonna be making a lot more of this than what you would need. But like I said, we are gonna have spaghetti for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up enough sauce that we have it for this and for the spaghetti. So I'm taking a two cans actually, you can just use one if you want of tomato sauce. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it in this bowl. While I have it here, let's go ahead and add in our garlic powder. Add in about a half teaspoon or so of salt. Also, please feel like you do not have to use this exact recipe. This is just how I know that we like it. I'm gonna add in some onion powder. And also, you could just buy jar sauce if that's what you prefer. Some of that ground white pepper. Some Italian seasoning, which we like a lot of Italian seasoning. I also like to add in some Worcestershire. I just bought a new bottle. Oh good, it's, oh man. I hate when it doesn't have the right kind of top. You know, when they make the tops like this, why do they not make the tops with the little hole? I don't like that. Okay, so we're just adding like three quarters of a teaspoon or so. I do like to add just a touch of sugar. You can skip this if you don't want it, but it just cuts the acidity of the tomatoes. So each pump is a teaspoon, so I did about a teaspoon and a half of sugar. Now we can just take this over to the stove and heat it up. All right, we are at the seven minute mark. So let's take that garlic butter and we're just gonna brush the tops of each one of these. These are gonna be so good. Now another thing that I wanna do, and I might add a little bit more once these actually come out, but I feel like there's not enough color on this. And if I had fresh parsley, I would definitely add it, but I'm just gonna add a touch of parsley to the top of each one. I just feel like it adds a little something, you know? All right, so these are gonna go back in for about, let's say eight more minutes, and then we'll check it. Oh man, it's gonna be so good. Okay, I went ahead and put some sauce here into this little thing. Look how snug it fits in there. So nice. I love the way this looks. I think it's really fun. Let's add a little bit of parsley to the top of this too. 
We're gonna cut one open because, you know, we gotta see what the inside looks like. Oh, that is what you want. That looks delicious. Oh yeah. The sun's coming in here at a really weird angle, but I'm gonna cut off a little piece here and taste it just so I can let you guys know how good it is. I mean, I can smell it and know it's good. It's basically like a meatball sub. These are so easy to make, so fun. Everybody in your family is gonna enjoy these. Your friends are gonna enjoy these. I do think one thing that would be really neat is if you're looking for handheld, definitely make those smaller and you can actually make like multiple rows of them. So then it's almost like a pull apart bread, but these are very good. I definitely suggest trying them. Polly, she doesn't dare enter the kitchen when my husband's in there. She knows, no kitchen. If you enjoyed this video and you would like more inspiration for easy meals or other recipes using canned biscuit dough even, check out the video above and you're going to get lots more encouragement and inspiration there.